Um, just for in a second, we got two more people coming in, so I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds as people log in. Ajid from Door to Door Cleaners, Los Angeles, welcome there. And if you are logging in, make sure when you put a comment in the chat box that you hit all panelists, it's down by the text box. Um, that way everyone can see your questions and interact with you as well. All right, so we are also going to be recording this as well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So my name is Sean Michael Lewis. I'm with Tier Level Digital Marketing. I also have two of my colleagues, Eddie Green and Whitney, um, on the call as well. So they are going to be um, available also when we start doing questions and things like that. So um, I'm gonna just kind of give you guys a little bit of background about us. We've worked in the restoration industry for several years. Um, myself and Eddie worked for one of the top surf pro franchises in the country, taking it from three to over 14 million in just three years. So we, we have a lot of experience and upon leaving surf pro, my background was all the way from corporate to working on the franchise level, commercial sales and business development. But, you know, one thing that we really have a passion for is teaching and just sharing things that have worked for us. Again, we don't have all the answers. We're not 100%, you know, going to give you everything you might be looking for. But we want to kind of give you three things today that you can take away, especially in the midst of this coronavirus outbreak, that you can actually implement with your digital marketing strategy. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very uh, quick into the point as we go through this, and then we can open it for some Q&A as well. So, um Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys. And this will be, uh, again, it's going to, we're just going to kind of go through this presentation and get started. So give me one second while I get this loaded up real quick. All right, just a second. Here we go. Well, I'm having a little technical difficulty here. Just give me one second. Sorry, I'm having a little connection issue here, but I should have it in just a second. <coughs> All right. So today we're going to be talking about, can everybody see my screen? Um, I'm going to go ahead and go into presentation mode here real quick. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. All right, great. So we're going to talk today about three easy ways to promote coronavirus cleanup with digital marketing for your restoration business. So this is, this is something a lot of people keep asking, but in general, we're just going to be talking about beyond the coronavirus things that you can be doing um, to help promote your business without being too overly salesy and push marketing. When, when, I, when I say push marketing, that means you're just pushing content down people's throat. Um, sometimes like in an emergency like we're seeing now, or if you have a storm event or some type of flooding, this can, um, you can definitely have more of that call to action, like call us now, we have teams available and things like that. But what we're really gonna do when we go through this is just kind of go through, you know, the impact that digital marketing is having. And what are three areas? Again, this is not gonna cover everything that I recommend that you do, but it's gonna start out with kind of giving you some of the basics. So what I wanna do is I wanna start out with this YouTube video, it's called Digital Transformation. Um, this was actually from the end of 2019, but I really like this video and kind of putting a perspective of where digital marketing is at right now. So I'm going to go ahead and share this as well. Give me one second while I switch over to YouTube real quick for you. And here we go. I just want to, it's about a two minute video. So I just want to kind of kick off with this and let you guys see this. So. Thank you. 
Again, that just, I kind of want to put that in perspective, and I, I'm sure everyone on this screen realizes the impact that digital marketing is having right now in terms of your business. And what really stood out in that video is, is really two things for me, is, is when you look at the stats, and it says 80% of our mobile consumption is video, and I look at all the restoration companies out there and the lack of video that they're using. And the ability to do video is easier than ever, especially when we have these mobile devices in the pocket in the palm of our hands at all time. And then also looking at what it said about attention span and how um, to, uh, when you look at attention span and it says a goldfish has more attention span than a human being, it really needs to put you as a marketer in the mindset of what you're putting out there has to either be quickly uh, interpreted, quickly uh, from, from an attention grabbing standpoint. And if you're not doing that, then people are just gonna keep scrolling and going through that. So what, what we really wanna go through today is, is I'm gonna talk about um, you know, making sure you understand the mindset when we're dealing with coronavirus. Obviously coronavirus is dominating the news feeds right now, dominating Facebook, dominating you know, anywhere you go online, there's going to be something about coronavirus. So the first thing I kind of want to uncover is you have to understand this. If you are a restoration professional, marketing salesperson, owner, you have to put yourself in the mindset to be an education company in your restoration industry. And basically what that means is you have to be able to out care, out educate better than anyone in your local market or in this industry to make that impact where people will be willing to call you and say, hey, I have a question. I want to talk about this. What can I do to prevent or be proactive against this? Now, you have to be extremely careful when we're dealing with marketing and something like the coronavirus that has a lot of unknown facts right now and a lot of unknown data. Um, they said last night, I was watching Fox News, several medical experts said the problem with the coronavirus is we just don't have the longevity of data yet to make you know, certain uh, decisions and things like that. So everything is being more proactive, preventative right now. What I would highly recommend, regardless of how well you do social media or anything else for marketing your business, is to make sure you look at at least these five links right here. I am going to be sending out a copy of this video of this presentation as well um, for you guys and, and a copy of the PDF of the presentation as well for you guys to have these links and things like that. But CDC, World Health Organization, OSHA guidelines, this is something a lot of people are overlooking right now. Um, and it's very important that you understand when you're talking to commercial facilities or trying to educate them through any of these social channels that you're making sure that you know what the guidelines are because a lot of them are doing in-house cleaning and things like that. If there's an effective person in that facility, they don't necessarily have the training and the certification to do this type of work. So it's very important to make sure that you as a restoration professional understand these inside and out, at least with what is up to date. And these sites are updating on a daily basis right now as they continue to get more and more information. Two other links there are just the, uh, some reports and joint statements from um, different organizations talking about COVID-19. So I would highly recommend that you read through those, understand all the processes, get with management, get with your ownership, get with your teams, if you are an owner, and make sure you go through that. It is extremely important. Um, so I'm gonna talk about three ways to make an impact with digital marketing today. Now, again, like I said, there's many, 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 many channels out there that we use on a daily basis as an agency for several hundred of our clients. But what I want you to focus on is like, if you're not doing anything right now on a daily basis, these are gonna be the three channels that I'm gonna recommend that you start with, and then you can branch out to the Twitters, Instagram, YouTube, all the other channels out there. But you, if you're not doing a consistent routine of educating and talking about the coronavirus and what your organization does beyond this outbreak, I mean, well beyond that, this is all going to apply to a long-term strategy as well. So just to go through these real quick, Google My Business obviously has a huge SEO impact. 
It is basically the map listing on uh, Google. It usually shows up in the first box, maybe under an ad or something like that. So it's highly, highly viewed by consumers looking for things when they have a question, you know, and I'm gonna kind of go through some basic things to make sure you're optimizing that for you. A lot of businesses, some businesses don't even know they have one that was automatically created and they bought a company and now it's up and live and they, they don't even know how to access it. So, you know, if you have issues like that, we're gonna make ourselves available between myself, Eddie and Whitney to help walk you through that as well. Um, so we can definitely talk about that in more detail. LinkedIn and Facebook are, are probably going to be your, just your most impactful right now. I'm not saying they get the, necessarily the best reach, especially when it comes to Facebook, if you're not doing targeted ad campaigns, I'll go through that a little bit and give you some resources of how you can exponentially get better at that. But LinkedIn right now, probably out of all the social networks, with the exception of TikTok, probably has one of the best organic reaches right now. And we're gonna show some examples of that as well. I'm gonna give you a fair warning, and I mentioned this just a second ago. It is all about consistency. I see time and time again, restoration professionals get on there, they post something one day, they go three days, they don't post again. The, the social media doesn't shut off. It's going around the clock. And if you can't produce content and educational, valuable resources out there, you're gonna completely miss that exposure. It doesn't matter if five people see each post, it's still five people. And when you look at consistency, what you're trying to do is build and build and build an opportunity for somebody that's scrolling through their phone, scrolling through their computer. Now, it is very important that you don't just post to post. You really have to put an emphasis on what the quality and the content is you're putting out there because I do believe in quality over um, the amount of posts you're doing, but it does need to be well thought. I mean, I definitely recommend that you start planning out maybe a week in advance, a month in advance if you can, but with everything changing so fast right now, it might be better to kind of have that week to week schedule right now. And it doesn't all have to be about coronavirus. It can be about simple things like how to wash your hands. And here's three steps from the CDC that we recommend that you do with this outbreak that's happening nationwide. Now, one thing a lot of people ask me in this industry because it's a lot different than a lot of other industries we're, we're selling a service that might not have happened yet but in this case it's, it's happening right now what i would recommend is documenting all jobs and this is well beyond the coronavirus outbreak is document all jobs by taking plenty of photos and creating video content now if 80 percent of mobile users are consuming video i cannot express how important video is Photos are very easy. Video is very easy because of this device in your hand right now. Mm -hmm. And when, when you, people say like, well, I don't know what to do video. I don't know what to do. Start basic. You can pull out and do a FaceTime style video where you're looking at your phone and just educate people. Here are three things to proactively, you know, uh, be prepared for obtaining coronavirus. Wash your hands, use sanitizer, blah, 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 blah. You know, don't go out in public. I mean, this information is all on these sites that we put at the beginning of this presentation. So it's very easy to find content, regurgitate it, and put it out there with a video in 30, 60 seconds. Again, remember, attention span is very short. So when you're doing photos and you're doing a video, you want to make it right to the point. Don't be afraid to use catching titles, like, like a presentation like this, three ways to exponentially increase your digital marketing. It's just something that will attract people, like three things you should be doing in this time with COVID-19 outbreak. You know, titles are everything, especially if you're doing videos that might not be in the video if you're not doing a lot of post edit and things like that. So let's get into this real quick. So Google My Business. Google My Business listings allow your business and information to appear um, in the first section of Google. So this is extremely important when you're talking about, you know, people searching for what their, you know, products and services like you do. Um, when used correctly, Google My Business is a powerful tool for driving customers away and dominating that first page of Google. It, what I love about Google My Business is it really does a good job at tracking analytics, mobile call volume. So a lot of people or a majority of people are searching from their phone. You can actually track when they hit that call now button, they visit your website, and you can see that those analytics and those trends as well. So it's extremely important that you understand how to go through Google My Business and understanding all the sections, which I will show some examples in just a second. So what do you do on a daily basis, monthly basis with Google My Business? So I, I put four things here. There's a lot more in this um, platform that you can expand. Again, we can't cover it all today, but I do want to encourage you beyond this presentation um, to reach out if you have more in-depth questions. We will be there to help you. And we have other industry partners like a Paul Farmer 
um, from Starfish SEO that are available to help you as well. But first thing you need to make sure is that you claim and validate your company information. This is extremely important because your phone number, website, address, all that has to be accurate because it's on your website differently than it is on Google My Business than where you have on all the other social networks and listing sites. It can create some friction with Google and the search results. So that consistency is extremely important. As an agency, we use a uh, third-party company called Yek that actually goes out and helps consistently make sure that information is the same across all social platforms. Um, Number two, there's actually a, a place in Google My Business where you can add service and product information to your profile. You can put very detailed description of what you offer, especially with this COVID-19. Um, you can't guarantee that no one will get sick. I want to make that very, very clear from a liability standpoint. You are here for preventative and proactive measures to help businesses um, take that step to make their employees safer and their patrons safer as well. The, the last two things on here are probably the most important from what we're seeing and seeing drive more call volume, more website visits, and more visibility in Google My Business is you need to upload photos and videos daily. Um, I, or at least, and I'll go through the frequency of that a little bit, but not necessarily daily, but at least weekly. What I would recommend to do daily is utilize the Google My Business post. Google Plus was the platform that was trying to build a social network. They kind of got rid of that uh, a year ago or more, and they moved everything into Google My Business as kind of the foundation for search. With that said, you can actually post pictures and videos with links to your website, a call now button in there that just help aggregate that search engine in viable content, especially right now where you might go in your service section and put, well, we do COVID-19, um, you know, clean up and these types of things for infectious disease. It might take a while for that to kind of rank in Google or be searched, but the post will allow you to get that out there on a daily basis, especially in a time like right now where people are specifically looking for that information. Um, how often should you post? Um, I would verify your information on a weekly, monthly basis. Whitney, our chief operation officer who manages hundreds of accounts with our client coaching team, has seen Google will go in there and revert information sometimes automatically. It will pull something from somewhere. Um, you just want to take a quick glance at it, make sure your address, phone number, all that service uh, areas. Uh, service categories is all up to date and accurate because if that changes, it can also create more friction in the SEO and search results. Um, I would continue to add services and details monthly. You can continue to expand. Don't cut and paste necessarily because then you get into some duplication issues, um, which is a general practice when it comes to search engine optimization. Um, but you can just continue to add. Like right now would be a great time if you're doing COVID-19 coronavirus cleanup to add that to that section. Um, I would recommend uploading photos and videos on a weekly basis. Um, there's a couple tips and tricks that you can do in this realm. You can, if you have a, if you have a more advanced marketing background, you can actually go into Photoshop and put metadata and different location, uh, data points in those photos. So when Google sees those photos, they understand what they're reading. We started doing this. Um, last year, and we saw a huge increase in the insight of people actually going to um, their website and actually an increase in phone calls as well. And I would highly recommend posting daily on Google My Business with dedicated links or call now features. This is extremely important um, when you're looking at keeping that up to date and that tool as valuable as possible for your clients. Um, so just as a couple examples here, this is Google My Business. I kind of put the, the navigation bar that when you log into Google My Business, um, this is what the photo page looks like. Having a good cover photo and logo, this is an example from one of our Serve Pro clients, but you can see right there, that cover photo that probably shows up in the map search had over 25,000 views. I would, you know, if it's doing well like that, you might want to leave something like that, but you can always change that up as well. You'll see some photos don't get a lot of views, but some get 79, 83, then five. Um, some of them have over 300. So this is just a great way that you can continue to add things on a daily, weekly basis um, that will make a huge impact for your business. Um, this is an example of just some recent posts that we've been doing for some of our clients. Some of them are a little more call to action and that's okay. But on a, on a general basis, like the one on the left side that was posted on March 16th, it just talks about washing hands, avoiding touching face, clean and sanitize your house. You know, we're offering information on different levels. Um, if you go over, you'll, you'll see it's just a definition of almost con what containment is. 
Um, you know, things like this, just providing educational information. You never know what people are going to search for, but these posts really generate a lot of attention, a lot of traffic to your website or to your phone. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that you get into actively doing Google My Business posts on a daily basis. This is what my favorite part of Google My Business is, is that you can actually go in and look at the insights. And I just pulled some random data right here, but um, what this is basically showing us is how many customers search for your business in a 30 day period. And you can break this into a quarter, a week and a month. Um, it shows the actual call volume over a 30 day period. Um, and that call volume is not total call volume. If they go to your website and hit the phone number on there, it doesn't track that necessarily. You can look in Google analytics and find more data like that. But what this really shows is how many people actually looked at it on their phone and actually called from their phone. Um, and it's a great way to track ROI for your efforts that you're doing in Google My Business. A lot of accounts, when we take over them, maybe have two, three, zero, five calls. And these are the numbers that we like to start to see is getting up to 30 calls. I mean, that's almost a call a day, but that's just Google My Business. That doesn't mean they're calling from other sites that they're seeing. It doesn't mean they're not calling from Facebook. The website probably generates the most phone calls when people are actually visiting the website and wanting to make a call to get something happening. What I really, at the bottom here is another, and there's a lot more insights in Google My Business that you can look at. But what I really like about this is you can see that it shows photo views and it compares it to businesses like you in your local market. When you're constantly on a weekly basis doing videos and photos, you will start to see these numbers trend a lot higher than the average business in your local market. And this is where you really start to make that impact. So I really want you to just see that the value of those analytics in there as well. Um, quick question. I'm going to look real quick. I see a few people are chatting. Um, I'm gonna actually do questions at the end, so I will go back to the chat box and look at those as well. Um, so let's go through Facebook real quick. Obviously, everyone on here is probably very familiar with Facebook. It has 2.27 billion monthly users. Small businesses, I mean, have been using this for several, several years. Um, however, like many of you probably realize is that the organic reach on Facebook is diminished and diminished to where you post something, maybe nobody will see it. Um, this has been a big frustration for businesses, but it also keeps you know, your personal news feed from being spammed. So how do we kind of get around that? And that's where we're gonna talk about boosting and running Facebook ads. Now, a lot of you might be like, whoa, 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 I'm not an agency. I don't know how to do that. It's scary, I don't wanna do it. That's fine, but it, it, is, it is very simple to use. And Facebook actually has some really good resources if you don't work with an agency that you can kind of get yourself certified and learn more about. So what do I recommend that you do? Ensure that your Facebook page information is 100% accurate and consistent with all your other listings in your website. Put thought into your profile picture and header photo video for your page. You can now do videos and moving images in that header section. Make sure you're, I see a lot of profiles will try to just cram their logo in there and you can't even see it. Remember that logo is very, very tiny when people are on their phone. What are you doing? What color scheme are you using um, to capture that attention? And that's what's really important. Um, develop content that is educational and humanizing and value added. Utilize in forms of videos and photos. Here, you, you really have to put your mindset into what captures your attention when you're going through Facebook. Um, if you're just talking about doing disaster restoration, cleanup, blah, 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 it, it doesn't really, it just doesn't really resonate with what people are looking at. You can get extremely creative in this industry. Before and after pictures always do extremely well. You have a stain on the carpet, you remove it, it, it people kind of get attracted to those things that you can do in under five, 10 seconds. Now, right now, because coronavirus is trending so big, this is a conversation that people are having. The more educational you make it, the more interaction and engagement you're going to get on the organic level as well as the paid level as well. The more value you put out there, the more people are going to want to follow you and keep up to date with what they need to do. Keep in mind, the news is, is fear mongering like crazy right now. Some of it's accurate. Some of it might not be. I'm not here to, to, to talk politics or anything like that, but it's all over the place. It's a lot of fear. It's a lot of, you know, red colors and scary graphs. This is an opportunity for you to be an advocate in your community to go out there and actually bring value and what can you do for your family, your business to keep yourself safe or at least be proactive. Again, 
don't make guarantees. Don't go out there and ever say, we're guaranteeing you to make you coronavirus free. The minute you clean a facility, somebody can recontaminate it like that. So don't recommend that and be very careful with your verbiage because once it's out there, it's out there. People can screen share it, they can save it, and then it can have some potential liability for you in the long run. This is what I wanna recommend for you guys. A lot of people don't know about this, but Facebook started a program a few years ago called Blueprint. And I have the link right there as well. It will literally walk you through and give you some type of Facebook certification that teaches you how to run ads, how to boost posts. And what, what I love about Facebook's advertising model is it is probably the most precise, targeted advertising you can do. When you run magazines and billboards, they have general staff. In Facebook, you can actually go in and pick homeowners, age groups, uh, male, female, whoever you want to target, business owners. And you can geographically target your local city, your local state, a region, whatever. It gives you so many options as a restoration provider to target people. And right now, everybody's attention is on coronavirus. So you really have a broad perspective in a certain age range that might want to do that. What you can start to eliminate is people under 18. That doesn't really make sense for this type of content. But, it, it, you know, you never know. They might share something with their parents and things like that. So don't, you know, necessarily think, oh, just because this is the age group that has the most money or things like that. Influence is all over when you get into social media. So how often on Facebook do I recommend um, that you post? I would always recommend verifying your information like Google My Business on a weekly or at least monthly basis. Um, you just want to make sure none of that information gets erased, changed on accident, things like that, because if your phone number is wrong, it could, it could cost you several thousand dollars worth of business. Update your header photo monthly to create a fresh look. Um, this is something we see with a lot of franchises. It's mandated with them where they just kind of put a new image for the season, things like that. With coronavirus, you might want to have a, you know, I mean, you can get creative. I mean, Facebook has features like Facebook Live where you could say for the month of April, we're going to be doing, you know, Facebook Live every Thursday at 2 p.m. in our time zone. And we're just going to be talking about these things. I mean, use that to your advantage. So when people go to that page, they can actually see something fresh. It's not the same thing throughout the whole year. I would recommend, and, and everybody likes to argue about how much to post on Facebook, um, I would recommend doing at least two posts a day at minimum. It doesn't mean you can't do more. I just think there's a minimum standard there. And right now with, with the content and educational value you can put out there, it might be a photo and it might be a video. It might be two photos, it might be two videos. But the more um, you engage out there, the better you're going to do. When you're uploading videos to Facebook, it is very critical that you organically upload that video. Don't post YouTube links. Um, that was kind of the way before Facebook got into video. But I recommend putting those videos up organically. It will get a lot more views and a lot more organic reach. And then when you boost, you'll start to see the views go up as well. Um, what, you know, when we, when we talk about videos, everybody gets kind of intimidated and, and that's okay because you might not be in that comfort zone for that. But I can promise you the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. And it, it's just something like you have to put yourself in the perspective. Don't go out there and go, hi, I'm restoration company XYZ. We do this, 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 and this. Call us today if you have any problems. No, get out there and talk about things that are being discussed. Have a conversation. Get people to want to provide feedback. That's where you'll really start to build uh, reputation and credibility out there. So um, with Facebook, a lot of you might be, well, two times a day, that's a lot. Well, you can use a lot of third-party tools and scheduling features inside of Facebook that will allow you to schedule your content out for the week. Um, I would definitely continue to check in on a daily basis if you have somebody in your organization just because of the fact um, people might be commenting, asking questions. You might get some negative people on there that you might need to block, but you can also take that negative conversation and turn it into something positive. Highly recommend that. Um, I would recommend setting an ad budget and executing it on it daily. Our recommendation, and this is, you don't have to take this, is you can spend as little as $10 a day, $250 a month, $300 a month, and just start to get a thousand points of engagement um, a month, get a higher engagement rate, get you know thousands of views and things like that by targeting that audience where people will actually see that content. If you just post and you don't use that feature, you're not really going to get any visibility or engagement. It's just the way Facebook is. You can complain about it all you want. It's the model. It's been that way for several years now. And it, even the reach in advertising is getting smaller and smaller. But you want to make sure that you're using it because it's the only way, but it's also one of the most effective ways to get your content out in front of potential customers as well. So I'm just going to kind of show you some surf. These are some examples from Surf Pro we work with. We work with a lot of Surf Pros if you don't notice that. Um, but 
these are just some ideas right now that of, of putting information out there, whether it's related to COVID-19 or not. But, you know, with the toilet paper uh, craze right now, a lot of people are buying tissues and paper towels and other types of wet wipes, and they're flushing them down the toilet. So this is just a piece of content that still keeps their brand out there in front of them. You can take a piece of content like this, put your logo on it, change the color scheme. doesn't matter. I mean, just make it original. Don't necessarily copy word for word, but these are very simple things that you can do. Um, the other one is just talking about kicking off your shoes. It, just, it uses um, some studies conducted by professional engineers. The carpet dust sample indicate that fine particles containing lead and are reduced by cleaning or removing or leaving shoes at the entry. Again, just valuable information that might capture somebody's attention and make them think. And again, your brand is part of that messaging. This is where we got into a little bit more of the coronavirus cleanup. Um, you'll see that we do a lot of posting with CDC recommendations, things like that. Um, the one on the right is a little more call to action. Um, and, and, you know, you have to be careful because right now there's always going to be people that want to comment on the negativity of what you're trying to accomplish. Unfortunately, restoration providers with the proper certification are the only ones certified to do this type of cleaning. And whether it's CAT 1, CAT 2, or CAT 3, especially when you get into CAT 2, CAT 3, you need full PPE and things like that, you have to be an accredited, you have to have certain um, certifications to do this type of work. So you might want to expand on that a little bit more where this was more of a simple post, but this one was actually boosted. It reached about 1,300 people, had 110 points of engagement. There was only $10 spent on this over a two-day period. So this again is in a local, local market in Tulsa County and people actually saw this information. Um, this organization happens to be extremely busy right now because they're constantly putting out educational content of what they can do and what consumers and business owners can do as well. Now, it doesn't always have to be about restoration or the coronavirus. It is very popular sometimes just to put out feel good type content because here's why. People will take something like this. It's just a motivational quote. Believe you can and you're halfway there. Very simple. No title above it in the text. It was boosted for about $10. Um, 19 people shared that. Um, over, it had three comments and over 100 people liked it. Here's the value of that. We're not just talking about likes and things like that. If 19 people shared this, when they share it, it says Surfro of South Tulsa County is in there with the image. So now these 19 people that shared it, have networks of hundreds if not thousands of people that are being exposed to that brand through positive messaging. This is where you have to start to think. It's not about immediate gratification ROI, but the, you talk about the consistency of doing this day in and day out between the educational industry information and feel good, non-industry related content, you start to have your brand out there where no other brand, regardless of the restoration or service space in general, are doing things like that. Now you tackle in video and all those things, you're starting to make a real impact. So last but not least, um, and then I might have a little surprise for you that I'm going to kind of finish up here. Um, LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, you have completely missed the boat because over 5 million, 500 million professionals are on LinkedIn on a daily basis. I can single-handedly tell you the amount of jobs we've received between myself and Eddie, and I'll let him chime in um, at the end of the presentation Q&A to kind of talk about his impact with social media when he's director of business development and how having these things managed for him on a daily basis made a huge impact. We, we have made thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars just from building relationships on LinkedIn. However, many of you that are on LinkedIn probably know there's a lot of bullshit out there. A lot of people are constantly saying, call me today, blah, 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 and they're doing a sales pitch and not really trying to do a value added relationship. So I can tell you right now, LinkedIn is, is by far one of the biggest values. We built our agency with connecting with restoration owners solely on LinkedIn when we started from the ground up. That was how we, we put out webinars, we put out content. You can do that too. You can do webinars that can do training right now for assisted living facilities where they're not gonna let you near that door of, of how to properly sanitize and clean. They might not hire you, but if you can provide that educational insight to commercial insurance writers and things like that, that might start to expand your reach where people go, wow, we really need a proactive cleaning. We don't have the supplies and products to do that. So LinkedIn has a lot of opportunity and a lot of ideas that you can go out there and do. So what I recommend doing, and this is a lot of people neglect LinkedIn. They don't understand how to optimize it. They sign up for it. They put a profile picture up and then they don't really fill out all the bells and whistles and they're constantly adding new features as well. First thing I recommend you do is you build out your profile and a company page for your business with accurate information, just like everything else. 
but you create a profile verbiage, verbiage in, in a very professional style photo. You can get creative with the photo. I've seen some people do animation that's very professional looking down to just a nice headshot. A, typically a selfie picture doesn't look that professional on LinkedIn. So I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you take something in with a feature on like an iPhone or a droid that makes it look like an actual professional photo. But you have to make sure that you're not doing what everybody else does. A lot of people have on their title, CEO of blah, blah, blah. I'm guilty of it. I typically go back and forth um, sometimes with some more generic and then sometimes some more edgy type titles on there. And I'm going to show you some examples that kind of really stood out to me um, across the industry as well. Use professional but catchy profile headers. A lot of people don't realize there's a profile header in there that you can do different change outs and things like that as well. Develop content on LinkedIn. Do not be like everybody else. Make your content educational, humanizing, and value added. You can do this in the form of photos and videos. Not everyone has access to LinkedIn Live yet, but I can tell you when that's available, it's highly recommend to use it. A lot of influencers have it right now, but it is going to be something. But I can tell you when I do videos on LinkedIn, the organic reach is phenomenal. Here's the thing. I don't spend any money advertising on LinkedIn. Um, Eddie will chime in a little bit later too and talk about how he's had posts that, and I actually have an example one, has gotten thousands and thousands of views because they are, um, the people just respond, share, comment, like, and whatever on there. So it makes it extremely valuable. Um, optimize on connecting with individuals and companies in your local market that you can build a long-term relationship with. There's a way, and I'll show you this too, where you can go into your, your the people tab, actually hit all my second connections. What a second connection is basically somebody that's connected to somebody you're already connected to, and then you can actually invite them to be part of your network. Again, you don't want to overdo it because LinkedIn will lock you out or block you from adding more people, but there is a number that I would recommend that you can do that on a daily basis. Um, check LinkedIn Analytics to see who is viewing your profile and reading your content. This is so cool because you can see other professionals, whether they're connected to you or not, that might be viewing your content. Maybe somebody else shared it, they looked at your profile, they want to see who you are. You can actually connect with them and even send them a private message saying, hey, saw you were looking at my profile, would love to take you for coffee or love to set up a phone call, talk about how you can be better prepared with this coronavirus outbreak. I've got some great value added resources and information for you that I'd like to share. So how often to post? What I love about LinkedIn is there's not really a feel there, but I would make sure just to go through all those areas real quick, refresh, add and update your profile on a monthly by monthly basis. Change your header throughout the years just to offer a fresh image, et cetera. I, I would honestly recommend posting at least two times a day. Um, whether you do a photo and a video or two videos or whatever, you write an article on LinkedIn, there's a great feature there where you can write an article and share it in your posting section as well. There's so many people that didn't even realize how to post on LinkedIn. So that's what I really want to emphasize here that it's a great option. People are reading the, that information, that content, and they are sharing it and looking because when people go on LinkedIn, it's not like Facebook and all the other social network. They're actually going out there to, to find educational content, looking to hire people, looking to recruit people, looking for businesses to connect with. There's a lot of valuable information there. And check your analytics daily. You, you would not believe the people that might be looking at it, your competitors might be looking at it, but more importantly, properties, business managers, insurance agents, adjusters, um, risk managers might be actually already looking at what you're doing. And if you are proactive, when you reach out to them, they're already gonna have a name recognition because they've already viewed your profile. So this is just going to kind of show you some examples on uh, LinkedIn that, that I've seen do really well. Let me go back real quick. Um, this is an owner up in Chicago. And you can see his title, Providing Peace of Mind in Home and Businesses, uh, Business Owners After Fire, Flood, and Mold Damage, Faster Than Any Disaster. It's just a little bit more than a simple, uh, I do fire, water, mold, or CEO of XYZ Company, whatever. And then when you get to his actual profile in the about section, it just kind of makes it a little more humanizing. Some people will frown and say it's not as professional or whatever, but you know, this is where you can really go out there and just kind of make it a little more like you're a real human being and not just a stock puppet on LinkedIn. These are some examples of some posts that I've seen that, are, that have done really well um, from different professionals. One thing that you can do that's really cool, and I've seen Service Master and Serve Pro do this, um, is you can create a PDF document. Um, you can take that PDF and when you upload it into LinkedIn, it makes like a little slideshow. So if this was live, you'd click on it and it would go through four or five different pages. This one is about the coronavirus, what it is, how did it start and what to do next. It was put together by service masters, a very good piece of content to read and go through there. 
you can put different hashtags in there as well that will also propel different search results and things like that. So it's just a good example that you can look at. And it had 19 people like it. Again, it was probably all organic. He, I, I don't actually know this person particularly, but he probably didn't spend a single penny on that and got thousands of views on it on top of that as well. The other one, it's just an image just kind of saying here to serve, here to help, here to clean. It puts all the different categories that they're available to help. A lot of people aren't aware that restoration companies are part of the coronavirus cleanup. So again, Again, you don't assume that they think you do it. They don't know, and you need to put that educational value out there. Um, these are some other random ideas that uh, we're working on a project with Escorta right now. But you can just see right here when you use a catchy question or title, like this piece of content um, is on our relationship with them, which is, did you know your restoration business can get into soft content cleaning by utilizing less than 700 square feet? 15 people liked it, nine people commented. We had people from uh, CRDM, first team, that were saying, no, 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 they, they don't need to do that. We do that for them, and we like the referrals they give us. It's it still, even though it was a little negative, it still created some energetic conversation. But it got 2,300 views within 48 hours. 2,300 views is a lot. Um, it, that 2,300 professional people on LinkedIn at least saw that. And a lot of times when they see it with the higher views like that, they're just reading it and reading the comments, but they're too embarrassed, too shy to get involved with that. But still, these are very good numbers. Even if you're getting 100, 200 views on a post, that, I mean, it's almost like free advertising. So it takes less than 30 seconds to post something. So why would you not be utilizing this at least twice a day? Um, the other one is a keynote speaker. Again, it's just a motivational quote. 46 people liked it. And he posted that 20 hours ago when I took that screenshot. Again, organic, organic, organic. It feel good right now. People want to hear positive reinforcement right now and everything's so negative. So now's also a great time when you're doing that non-industry content to do it on the basis of positivity. Um, these are some more posts right here that we, we did personally between myself and Eddie. Eddie's actually got close to 5,000 views on this post on the left. And he was actually getting frustrated with seeing so many uh, companies out there charging 4 or $5 a square foot for Cat 1, Cat 2 coronavirus cleanup and just really gouging uh, people in that area. And a lot of people chimed in and said, we agree, we agree. There's companies like that in my area and things like that. It did have more of a negative tone, but it also opened up a huge conversation with professionals. And it actually was, they agreed. They were like, this is a, a major issue. But look at the number of likes, comments on there. And again, thousands and thousands of views. Um, the one on the right was a webinar we did earlier. We had over 100, uh, 300 people over two days on uh, the positioning the verticals for salespeople. And there's some of you on this webinar were on there, but just one post that had 13 likes, 540 views. Getting into the connection part of LinkedIn, a lot of people don't understand this, but this is where you can really start to build that network. And what I recommend doing is maybe adding 20, 25 people a day, it's a good number so you don't get locked out. Sometimes you might just say you can't add any more for today, things like that. But what you do is you go up to the, the search area up here, but you connect people. When you get into the uh, people section, you hit the connection bar and you can go down to second. You can even break it down to locations and more information if you want to focus more regional or your area. When you hit second connection, it allows you to see a screen like this where you can go through and see who they're connected to and who they are, what their title is. And you can literally go through and connect. It's going to prompt you with the screen on the right. It used to be you could go connect, 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 and didn't do this. But what it's trying to prompt you to do is you can actually write a little note in there. And you probably get these a lot in your inbox. But this is where you have to get creative and say, hey, with the recent coronavirus outbreak, I just want to let you know we have some great educational resources, how you're at no cost to you, that your business can be better prepared. And those are things right there that you can do um, that might start to build more connections, but at least spark conversations, phone calls right now, because people aren't going to want you coming to their office or a place of employment right now, especially if they're shut down. So I would highly recommend doing this because it's extremely valuable to build that network over time. And the bigger you build your network, the more you post, it just starts to connect with more and more people. And then people start connecting with you because you're building a bigger, a bigger following. So wait, I, I know we talked about three things, but I wanted to kind of throw one more thing in there um, before we get to Q&A because we're running out of time real quick. And I'm going to go through this really fast because this is, this is much um, more um, aggressive and newer, and I know a lot of you are either exposed to it, don't want to use it, uh, intimidated by it, whatever, but it's TikTok. And the reason I love TikTok right now, because between LinkedIn and TikTok, they probably have the best organic reach. And 
you know, TikTok's already starting to slow down a little bit with that organic reach. A lot of people are like, oh, it's Chinese owned. I don't want anything to do with it. Well, it, it doesn't matter who owns it right now. Um, if you're that terrified about people taking your information, don't put information you don't want people to have out on the internet. And I kind of like to hit that myth right away. But what I love about TikTok is with any social network like Facebook, when I, in 2004, when it was really starting to surface out of college, I really like to look at the data and see where people's attention is going. And this is what TikTok is doing right now. In less than 18 months, the number of US adults on TikTok grew 5.5 times to 14.3 million. This is not a platform where everybody thought, oh, it's just younger kids. That was more of the Snapchat generation. This is actually uh, getting a lot of content. Now, there's a lot of silly content out there, but I'm starting to see a lot of creative content as well. TikTok has 500 million active users worldwide. It's already at the same number of active users as LinkedIn, but it even has more downloads than that. Um, people, it doesn't, people are downloading, maybe viewing it, but they're not actively using it, but still 500 million active users. But it's already out of YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. It's already starting to see trends that it's the most downloaded app in the Apple iOS store. And I believe it's, it's similar on Android as well. What's really cool about, we, we talked about attention and attention span. Videos are no longer than 60 seconds. A lot of them are five to 10 seconds, which is very important when you're thinking about your business. How do I take Everything that we're doing, three things with coronavirus, put it in 30, 60 seconds that can make you um, more proactive and safer while you're out on the streets or with your family. It doesn't have to be necessarily all about cleanup. What are creative ways you can utilize TikTok to get that attention? But on average, 52 minutes a day are spent on TikTok and they're continuing to see that number rise as well. 90% um, of all TikTok users check the app on a daily basis. That's a very high number, um, which again, Pay attention to that attention, where that's going, where, who's using it, and things like that. Um, this is just an example of, of, you know, there's not a lot of restoration companies using this right now. And that's why I think this is a great opportunity to kind of get into that space and, and be a source of information. Um, I just typed in some random titles here, like carpet cleaning. These videos, believe it or not, get thousands, if not millions of views of doing before and after type work. Um, you have a stain of wine or something in a carpet, you remove it in 10, 15 seconds. People love and share it, like it, and things like this. This is just showing the number of likes on the videos. Most of them have several more views. Um, when I went over to coronavirus, this is what's really interesting on all social networks right now when you post about coronavirus. Those social networks are actually putting links to COVID-19, to the CDC, World Health Organization, and things like that. Why would you not want to be involved in that conversation right now? You can hashtag coronavirus, corona, whatever. You could maybe even create a hashtag that goes viral. Um, but that's the thing about TikTok is it's so easy to go viral and beyond. And I just want to show an example. Like, I'm not saying this like, oh, everybody else is doing it. We personally have seen it in our own business. So we started a screen printing business that does T-shirts and things like that. We posted two videos. One hit a million views and one hit 1.5 million views in three to four days. And we spent zero dollars. It got hundreds of thousands of likes, and it was—it wasn't even anything that funny. It was um, this is Angela, who's in our office, was working on a press, and she was jumping up and down. But people thought she had to go to the bathroom or something. And you can put the humanizing comedy nature in your content because that's what does really well. But what we're finding is like when you made the T-shirts and people saw the images going on again before and after, it did really well. When I think of restoration companies, I think about before and after, going in, cleaning up something, showing the process in hazmat suit, fogging, doing the different wipe downs. It can be extremely beneficial for you to capitalize on that. And, and the cool thing about TikTok, you can post six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times a day. And one of those videos might get hundreds, if not thousands of views, if not millions. So I would highly recommend, and I would love, if any of you are doing that right now, please share me your TikTok channel. I would love to use those examples moving forward. Um, but I just wanted to kind of put that information in there as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up questions. I'm going to unmute the rest of the team so everybody um, can, can chime in here. So let me stop sharing this real quick. Um, Eddie, Whitney, can you unmute if you haven't yet already? Okay. Done. Um, so what I want to do right now, I know some of you, um, 
So yeah, Emily, I'm gonna go through a few questions real quick and I'm gonna let you guys chime in. Emily goes, isn't TikTok popular with mostly young people? It absolutely was. It was actually a company called Musical.ly before, um, but now it, it, it converted to TikTok, but you saw those numbers, it's five, it's the number of adults has grown in the millions right now. And a lot of the content on there, some of the biggest uh, influencers on TikTok are adults right now. So I would definitely not, I mean, every social network starts out with a younger user base, and then it migrates to the older demographics, but I am seeing it so much right now with the um, adults using it. I mean, even my father's in his 60s and he's using it on a daily basis. Um, let me, uh, let me, uh, oh, Eddie answered a few of these questions. Thanks, Eddie. Awesome. Well, there is a Q&A box on there as well. Um, and, and Whitney's been answering some questions as well. Eddie, Whitney, would you like to chime in and add some thoughts and things like that to the attendees? And, and again, use the Q&A box, use the chat box as well um, to put your questions in there as well. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that Google actually added a COVID-19 update in the posting feature this week. That way, if your business is considered essential, you can update your customers that you're still open 24 seven, still offering the same services. If you have any services that customers may not know you offer, that's a great place to update them on because whenever people are searching for your listing, that COVID-19 update is gonna show up right underneath. Yes, good point. Um, just a couple other questions real quick. James asked about Instagram. Instagram is a great tool. I just didn't have enough time to cover it today. I wanted to start with three that I felt would have the most impact. And I kind of threw TikTok in there because it's, it's newer. Um, it's actually been around for several years. But Instagram is incredible if you know how to use it correctly. You have to be a lot more trendy, use very creative photos, very, maximize hashtags. Um, which is a whole other process. We might do a segment on Instagram and send an invite out to you guys as well um, later if we want to go into that a little bit deeper. You're welcome to ask us. We'll do it one-on-one -on -one with you if you have specific questions. Um, Lisa Browning had a, a question. It's a good question, actually. When you're talking about posting daily um, to Facebook and LinkedIn, do you recommend posting different content on each platform so you, you can cross-post the same content to both? So I, I, per, I personally like to do a little bit of unique in case people do go back and forth. It's not necessarily a bad thing if you're strapped for time, but I would recommend saving all of your content because if you post something on Facebook, you might want to reverbage it or reword it for LinkedIn, but do it on another day. And then whatever you do on LinkedIn, you might want to cross pass that back to Facebook or another platform a week later or things like that. It's very important that when you create this content and content calendar, go back and look at what works and what doesn't work. When you do your next social calendar, then you can go in and take out things that don't work and imp implement more of the things that do work. So I would definitely recommend saving those in a Google Drive folder, creating an Excel spreadsheet or something to kind of put that schedule in of when you're going to release it and then schedule it out. A lot of people will schedule it out a month at a time. Um, so definitely, um, you know, consider that and stay extremely organized with it as well. What is value added? What criteria would you designate as value added? Eddie, you want to jump in on that about value added content? Yeah, absolutely. So whenever you, when you're looking at value added content, um, you're going to want to show a, what different differentiates you between everyone else. Um, that is a huge value add. Um, and you know, in this industry, it seems like that more often than not, most people, um, just want to go out and say, hey, we do, you know, carpet cleaning or we do fire water mold. You know, that's there's really no differentiation. There's really no value to why a customer should choose you over over someone else. Um, the second thing is on the value add is you're the subject matter expert in your field. So being a subject matter expert in your field, you should showcase educational format. You have to know um, when to turn it on and when to turn it off because if you only do one certain type and all you do is blast and ask for business, then you're going to turn people off. So you have to know how to be able to engage the consumer, which is, you know, not tooting our own horn, but that's why we are a niche based in the restoration industry because we've done the work and we know how to engage the consumer um, through both um, just regular content and educational content as well. So I hope that answers your question. But value add really to me is just about differentiation. Yeah, and, 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 and again, you know, like we have a mantra called out care, out educate. And, you know, at the end of the day, I know you guys are all hungry to get more business and grow your businesses, and that's great. That's a great mentality to be hungry but humble. Um, Eddie always says, stay hungry, stay humble. 
Um, but, but what I really think is the more you truly care about what you I mean, these businesses are suffering right now. They're really struggling. They're really hurting. You know, doors are being closed. People are being laid off. And, you know, we, we are very blessed in the restoration industry. This is, I mean, I'm sure it's impacting us in some way, but also fire, water, mold, um, infectious disease cleanup. It's kind of a recession resistant type business now. It's going to get scary when these people don't have money to pay for it because we know a lot of insurance companies aren't paying these claims right now. Um, so it, it's very important that, you know, you do this with a servant's heart. Um, and things like that. And Eddie can always expand on that a little bit more. But we did have another question, and Whitney, I'm gonna let you take this one. Um, it was about could you talk a little bit more about Google's COVID 19 update and how we can take advantage? Sure thing. So it's in the exact same section you would use to actually create a regular post in Google My Business. So once you're in your listing and go to the post section on the left hand side, you'll see at the top it says, COVID-19 update offer, which is another new update with Google. And then it has the what's new regular post and the event section. So in the COVID-19 update, that's where you'll let your customers know if your hours are changing, if you're still open your normal hours, if you're still offering your normal services. If there's any different, like I know some restaurants, like they're like, I'm offering livery, we're not fully closed. So that's the section that you're going to update customers on the current status of your business. If you're offering any new services that could help them, such as cleaning, disinfection, sanitization, or if you are closed in your office, open in your office, things like that. The other thing too, I want to expand just to for a second on what Whitney was saying, you know, whenever you talk about um, what's going on with the business too, um, I know the majority of people on here, either restoration, cleaning companies, um, things like that, make sure you position yourselves as, as the subject matter experts. You know, you wouldn't walk into your doctor's office and offer to do a heart surgery, you know, for the doctor. You guys are, um, give the opportunity to be a hero um, in society today, um, if positioned and done correctly, if you're operating with, with integrity and ethics, um, you know, so position yourself as that expert, you know, because people are trying to go out there. The objections that you're getting is that they're trying to use their employees to do the cleaning and they're setting themselves up for so much liability and risk because you guys are trained in infectious disease control. They are not. Um, so that's really how you overcome that objection. Um, you can look at my LinkedIn profile. I actually just put a post up pertaining to that very, that very thing. And within five minutes, it's already got over a hundred views and interaction. So, you know, if you're looking for ways to be able to position it, reach out to us um, and we'll be happy to consult with you guys one-on-one -on -one on, in that regard as well. Well, cool. Well, out of respect to your time, I definitely, if there's any other questions that we missed, because the chat box moves pretty quickly, if there any questions we missed that some, if you want to recut and post it um, at the bottom, do so right now. If not, we're going to go ahead and, and hand out this recording. I'll probably email it out in the next hour. We'll have a, um, a video in the presentation for you to view as well. Um, Eddie's contact is eddie, um, E-D-D-I-E at tier level .com. Um, Oh, there's a thing. I just put it on there as well in the chat box. So feel free to reach out to any of us. Whitney, put your email up there again as well. Um, any of us on our team are available to help and answer questions for you. I hope this was helpful and beneficial for you. Um, again, there's, there's so much in this realm. I know I had to go through it very quickly, but I wanted to cover some of that meat and gravy that you guys could actually utilize. Um, and Eddie, do you have a link to your LinkedIn as well? They're asking for as well. Um, yeah, I'm getting ready to post that right now. So it, you know, it, it's something where, you know, digital marketing, the full spectrum, when you get an Instagram and Twitter and all those different platforms, I mean, you know, there, there's really no experts out there. We don't claim to be because it changes so fast. So what I encourage you is to always learn, always continue to learn. You might have known what we talked about today, and hopefully there was one thing you could take away that will help impact your business. And I can tell you right now, the Google My Business is, is, is a huge opportunity to get that immediate gratification after 30 days. Um, make sure you're taking advantage of that. So if there's no more questions, we're going to go ahead and end. Again, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for joining on here. We're, our hearts are with you guys out there. I know you guys are on the front line of trying to make an impact in your company. Um, Eddie, did you, oh, you just, uh, Emily didn't see it. Emily, we'll, we'll also send an email out. Eddie will have your email as well. Um, so you're welcome to email home at eddie at tierlevel.com. 
um, if you need to get any of that information from him one-on-one -on -one as well. So, well, thank you guys so much. Um, again, you guys are awesome. I appreciate all that you guys do out there. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at any time, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Hi, thank you guys. Thank you.